we're going to look at two errors. The first one is I cannot drop the clustered index because index object because it is being used for automatic cleanup of age data. Consider setting history retention period to infinite on the corresponding system version to temporal table if you need to drop this index. And then the other error, which is setting finite retention period, failed on system version temporal table data beta schema dot table uh, because the history table data dot schema dot table hist does not contain the required clustered index. Consider creating a clustered column store B tree index starting with the column that matches end of system tied period on the history table. These are actually related to each other. Um, in this case, what's happening is uh, you're, we're trying to drop an index on a table that has a finite uh, period of time. In this case, uh, what we're trying to do is uh, we are trying to set a finite retention period, but there is no index. So we'll actually look at these in order. In fact, if we wanted to generate these errors, you could see this. Uh, the first thing that you would want to do is you would want to create a table with a a uh, temporal table, so a temporal timetable, basically a, a version, a time version of the table. And then you would create an index. And so the way to duplicate these errors, if you wanted, would be, first of all, to drop the index, and you would see this error be thrown. And then, of course, uh, in order to uh, generate this error, once you set it to finite, you would drop the index. But then if you tried to set it back to, let's say, a three-month period of time, you would see uh, this error over here, uh, the second error, and that's because um, you would be specifying a time period, but there's no index on the table. So why do these errors occur? So let's look at the, the first error. Uh, when we are version, when we are time versioning a table, so this is temporal table, what it's looking at is the history, if you would, of a table. That's why I have these named a certain way. So if we think about a table's name called table, and the history's table is table hist, this is tracking the changes of this table. But if we're setting it for, let's just say, a three three month period of time, it has to only occur for a three month period of time. So therefore, it's got to know when that time cutoff goes. And there has to be an order of when new records come in and when old records get flushed out. Thus, there's the need for the index, right? You can see, oh, okay, it's it has to know the order of the data, the new data that are gonna be coming in based on what's changing on this underlying table. Uh, table. That's what we're calling it. And so that table hist has to be able to track, okay, these are the new records, these are the old records, these are the ones that have to be flushed out. So why does why does it allow us to drop the index when there's an infinite amount of data? Well, it's because it doesn't need to track the records, right? It doesn't need to worry about um, which records are going to drop off in time, right? So if you think about it, it's keeping track of everything. And so that makes sense. If we try to drop the index, that index is required for keeping track of that order. Here's the new ones, here's the old ones, here's the ones that drop off. Well, if we get rid of that index, I mean, if we set this to infinite, then it doesn't matter. We're going to be keeping it forever. We're going to be keeping the data forever. So we don't need to track because um, it just needs to track the, the new data that are coming in. That's it. It doesn't need to have any cutoff. Okay. Well, the same is true if we invert the same problem, whereas if we have it set to infinite, I have to think while I'm doing this. This is interesting because I'm thinking and presenting at the same time. So we are setting it to infinite, um, and then we want to go back to setting it for a restricted period of time, but we don't have an index. Well, how is it going to know which records are too old and are going to fall off? How is it going to track that information? And so that's what's going on with these two. And again, if you want to duplicate them, you can duplicate, of course, by first of all, creating a table uh, with a temporal timetable uh, versioned, and then going through this process of trying to drop the index. You'll see the first error. Um, then after you set it to infinite, then dropping the index, you will be able to, then trying to set it back to a three month or whatever it is. It could be six months, nine months, a year, whatever. So. It's important to understand with a uh, temporal timetable in these, in these situations, we're tracking information in the table. If we only want to do that over a period of time, we are going to need an index because we need to know not just the new records that are coming in, but we need to know which records are falling off that cutoff period because we're only tracking it for a period of time. If you want to do it for an infinite period of time, just be aware that could potentially get pretty large. Okay, So that's perfectly fine in some environments. In fact, some environments, uh, I can think of like certain config tables I can think of, which rarely change, but we want a full history. This is perfectly fine because the config table may only change, let's say, 10 records, maybe, maybe every three months. And so that would be perfectly acceptable. Um, but these are options that we have. This in this case is Azure SQL, but just be aware that it's one of those things where if you get these errors, stop and think about, okay, um, 
the, the bigger picture is, do we want to track it for a short period of time or do we want to track it for a long period of time? If we want to track it for a short period of time, we are going to have that index requirement because we're going to need to know which records are falling off.